Today is Wednesday, July 21st. We're talking about intense western wildfires that are sending smoke across the country and forcing thousands of people from their homes. Also, a longtime advisor and ally of former President Trump was arrested. We'll tell you what he's accused of doing. Plus, who helped the new NBA champions break a 50-year drought? How a popular streaming service and fitness company are getting into gaming and where a floating train is traveling five times faster than cars on a highway. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in about 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Lacey Evans, filling in for Erica Mandy during her maternity leave. You ready? Let's do this. The Boot Lake Fire in Oregon is now so large and so intense, it's creating its own weather. The fire has burned through more than 600 square miles so far. That's an area about half the size of Rhode Island. Now, the Oregon State Forestry Department says the heat from the flames is forcing the air to rise and form what's known as pyrocumulus clouds. They can become their own thunderstorms with strong winds and lightning that can spark even more fires. Already, firefighters are dealing with above-average temperatures and extreme drought that are also helping fuel fires. And the bootleg fire is just one of at least 83 large fires burning almost 1,900 square miles across 13 western states right now. Nearly 20,000 firefighters are working to control them, while thousands of people have had to evacuate their homes. Meanwhile, the fires are sending smoke across the U.S. Skies are hazy from the western fires, as far away as New York City and Boston. So people are being asked to wear masks outside to avoid the unhealthy pollution. Another one of former President Trump's longtime allies was arrested this week. Tom Barrick is a billionaire real estate investor who has advised Trump over the years. But now he's being accused of acting as a secret foreign agent for the United Arab Emirates. Federal prosecutors say he and two other associates worked to influence Trump's foreign policy to benefit the UAE, even though they never registered as lobbyists. Barrick is also accused of lying to federal investigators during an interview about his foreign ties two years ago. So far, no comment from Trump. But a spokesman for Barrick says he plans to plead not guilty during a court hearing next week. Remember, he's just the latest member of the former president's inner circle to be investigated for foreign ties. Trump's first national security advisor, Michael Flynn, admitted to working on Turkey's behalf while he was working on the Trump campaign in 2016. Other top campaign officials from that same year, Paul Manafort and Rick Gates, confessed to acting as unregistered lobbyists for Ukraine. And in recent months, Trump Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, has been under investigation for the same thing. To be continued. Disgraced movie producer Harvey Weinstein is about to face new sexual assault charges, this time out of California. He was transferred from New York to Los Angeles yesterday. Weinstein is already serving a 23-year sentence for forcing himself on two women in New York. But five others are accusing him of rape and sexual assault in Southern California. So a judge said he could leave New York to go through the court process in California. They're expected to take him to trial later this year. If convicted, Weinstein faces a sentence of up to 140 years in prison. Weinstein has always said all his sexual encounters have been consensual. So once again, he's expected to plead not guilty. A new widespread investigation found hundreds of politicians, journalists, activists, and lawyers around the world have been hacked. The politicians reportedly include France's president, Emmanuel Macron, and 13 other heads of state. The journalists work for organizations like the AP, Reuters, CNN, Wall Street Journal, and more. The Washington Post and 16 other news organizations have been investigating the hack. They found evidence prominent people's iPhones were infected with military-grade spyware from a private firm out of Israel called NSO Group. That software is able to activate cameras and microphones on phones for real-time surveillance. It can also steal photos, location records, passwords, and more. However, the firm that makes it has denied the reports. It says its spyware is only used to keep track of terrorists and other criminals, locate missing children, or find survivors of tragedies. Still, the United Nations human rights chief is calling the investigation extremely alarming, and French prosecutors are now investigating the spyware for themselves. 
The highly contagious Delta variant now makes up 83% of new COVID-19 cases in the U.S. The CDC director told lawmakers about the big surge yesterday, saying it's even worse in places with low vaccination rates. The Delta variant is estimated to be more than twice as contagious as previous strains of the virus. Because of that, the average number of new daily cases is up 66% this week from last week, and it's up 145% from two weeks ago. Hospitals and deaths Deaths are also rising, although they're still far below the levels we saw back in the winter months. That's because vaccines have been shown to work against it. As of this morning, almost 49 percent of the U.S. population has been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. More news is coming up, but first, a quick break for our sponsor. Here's your main host, Erica Mandy, to talk about Rothy's. Make sure your summer is off on the right foot with comfortable, best-selling shoes like flats, loafers, and sneakers from Rothy's. With sandals in an array of colors, their newest styles have you covered. And their spacious, washable bags are perfect for summer getaways. I love to throw on my Rothy sneakers for any occasion. I know they're comfortable enough when I go on a walk around the block and cute enough for meeting friends for brunch. And now Rothy's is not just for women. Rothy's newly launched men's shoes are durable, washable, and better for the planet. Plus, rigorous testing during R&D results in a perfect fit, wash after wash. And now, to help you welcome summer in style, Rothy's is doing something special. That's right, they gave us the chance to share this super rare opportunity with our listeners for a limited time. Through August 1st, 2021, you can get $20 off your first purchase at $100 or more at rothys.com slash newsworthy. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash newsworthy. Trust us, you don't want to miss it. Head to rothys.com slash newsworthy to find your new favorites today. It turns out last year's recession was the shortest in American history. That's according to a nonpartisan research group that analyzes economic cycles. The group says the recession lasted from February through April of 2020. And it says the economy shrank extraordinarily fast in that time. Gross domestic product, or GDP, dropped more than 31 percent in the U.S. The GDP is basically the total value of goods and services produced by a country in a certain time period. And it dropped about as much last year as it did during the Great Depression. But this time, the rebound was fast, too. Economists point to a few reasons. One, COVID-related lockdowns were relatively short. Also, businesses adapted quickly to social distancing measures. And as CNBC reports, relief packages from Congress made up the difference. But the research group's report doesn't mean the economy is totally healed. There are still 7 million fewer people working now compared to before the pandemic started. For the first time in 50 years, the Milwaukee Bucks are the new NBA champions. They defeated the Phoenix Suns at home last night in Game 6 of the Finals. Their star, Giannis Antetokounmpo, led his team to victory. He scored 50 of the Bucks' 105 points. The final score was 105-98. to It was the third game of the series in which 26-year-old Giannis scored at least 40 points. So last night, he was named Finals MVP. The last time the Bucks won a championship, it was 1971, when the team was led by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This time, there were tens of thousands of fans packed into and outside the arena, and they partied in the streets overnight. The Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition has three different cover models this year. One of the covers features a transgender woman for the very first time. It's actress and former ballroom dancer Lena Bloom. She's also the first transgender person of color ever to be featured in Sports Illustrated, period. The other two covers feature rapper Megan Thee Stallion and tennis star Naomi Osaka. The editor-in-chief said all three women serve as a reminder that beauty comes in many forms. All three versions of the new Sports Illustrated Edition come out this week. After months of teasing, Netflix has finally confirmed it's getting into video games. Games will be added to existing subscriptions, and customers won't have to pay any extra for them. Netflix is focusing on games for mobile devices first, but they'll eventually expand and offer games for consoles like PlayStation and Xbox, as well as desktop computers. Netflix officials say they're developing games based on the network's original shows, movies, and popular characters. But it's not clear yet how long it'll be before the video games are ready to launch. 
By the way, Peloton also plans to get into gaming. The fitness company announced it's adding a video game called Lane Break to its app and its bikes. But instead of a controller, users will control the game with their cycling skills. They'll have to change their speed and resistance to control a rolling wheel on their screen and meet different goals. Players will be able to choose the difficulty level, music, and length of the game before starting. That's on track to come out later this year. China has developed a high-speed train that actually floats above the track. The levitating train is powered by electromagnetic forces. It doesn't touch the rails at all, which helps it move faster because there's no friction between the train and the track. Officials say it can reach maximum speeds of more than 370 miles per hour. That makes it the fastest ground vehicle on Earth. As Reuters reports, China has been using the technology for more than two decades, but on a very small scale. Now it's working to get it ready for more widespread spread use. The train is expected to be ready for commercial service in the next decade. And that's it for the main news today, but it's now time for Work Wednesday, when we break down one interesting career or work-related news story. But first, here's Erica again with a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Sometimes we need a little assistance figuring out what could be holding us back in life. Well, BetterHelp is a great way to connect with a professional counselor in a secure and private online environment to figure it out, and most importantly, live our best life. And because BetterHelp is all online, you can get a little help on your own time and at your own pace. Everything you share is confidential, and you choose whether you talk with your counselor through text, phone, video, or all of the above. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with a counselor they think is a great fit. If you're not happy with your counselor for any reason, request a new one. No big deal and no extra charge. It's a convenient and affordable option available for clients worldwide. I want you to start living a happier life today. And as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. Join more than a million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Go to betterhelp, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. Now back to Work Wednesday. American workers say they're trapped in too many meetings, and the amount of time spent in them is hurting their ability to actually do their jobs. Recent data from Harvard Business School found the number of meetings most workers had to sit through went up by 13 percent after the pandemic started. On average, workers put in about an extra hour every day to get their work done. Part of the problem is people working from home. In that setup, quick conversations that may have ordinarily happened by someone's desk in the office have to be formally scheduled as calls or video chats. In another survey from the meeting scheduling tool Doodle, 56 percent of workers said their job performance was suffering because of how much of their time was spent in meetings. Experts told The Wall Street Journal hybrid work schedules could make this situation even messier. Employees may have to figure out how to have in-person conversations while also looping in colleagues working from home. So more apps and think tanks are coming up with tips, ideas and best practices for how to handle these new hybrid models. All right. Thank you for listening today. We'll catch you up on more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 